Hello everyone, Thranks is here, and welcome to Sea of Thieves. This will be my single player episode 6. So today I'm not really going to be doing a voyage, but more just showing off a really cool place that I like on the map. As you can see, I've lost an arm in recent battles, so we've had to go to this fancy new hook. Now, one of the things that I've seen in the comments is while some people think they would appreciate this game in single player more, other people think that single player really isn't an option for this game, and I kind of want to dispute that a little bit with this episode. Ooh, sunken treasure. It's not what we're after today, though. See, because Sea of Thieves really doesn't have to be about completing voyages and uh, making money, because there's a whole set of clothing that you can get without any reputation in voyages. It does cost money, but it's generally cheaper, and that's the uh, the Bilgerat set. Now, you could totally, if your idea of having fun in this game was really just to sail around and do whatever you wanted and not care about any of the completion, you would still be on equal footing with everyone as you learned the game and got better at it. Because even a one-person sloop who's fairly confident in what they're doing and competent in making things happen will outperform a crew of four who are just learning the game or aren't communicating well. This is uh, Shipwreck Bay here. This is a good place to lose people if you're ever being pursued and you have valuables on board in a sloop, single player. But this game doesn't necessarily have to be about attacking other players. You can keep yourself safe without ever really engaging with other people. It's a beautiful day for sailing. So we're just going to scan the horizon. So we have a ways to go. I think we're tacked wrong for the wind, though. So for a headwind, we're going to be a little slow, but that's okay. What we're going to do instead is we're actually going to sail, tacking into the wind. So we're going to start by, let's see, northeast would be preferred, but we can't exactly go northeast. That's going to put us, or southwest uh, rather, is going to put us more into the wind, so southeast. Gotta be careful. I inverted the positions on the map because I was in a hurry because of that rock. But when you're playing by yourself, it's very easy to find yourself in a state of hurry. There you go. So once we've caught the, beam of the wind abeam, we'll make the most speed here. The sloop, to get a little bit of height, you can always hop up here. But it's not going to be as good as the crow's nest. What do we have here? Just a little atoll. So, how far are we? Well, this place that I really like is actually way down here. So we've got a bit of sailing to do. But that's okay. Because sailing really is the coolest part of the game. There's a galleon off the port bow. Max range just went around that rock. So here's what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm clear of any shallows that could be around this area. Check the map, because I'm pretty sure there's nothing marked ahead of us. Right, this is actually a spot I showed in episode three. This is S16, which is a huge coral reef and cave system on the western side of this island. So I actually sort of want to slow down here a little bit and see what this galleon is going to do, because this would be a great place to bait them if they were coming after me, to run them aground, and then catch the wind and take off. When you can run a, a galleon aground is when you really can test their communication. They have to be able to coordinate the damage. See, it seems like they're stopping or getting further away. Okay, we're going to continue movement at this point. Only we're going to cut more on the west side of south. We're going to see if we can just 
lose them between islands. If we could just break line of sight, we'll be good. Always make sure you don't get target fixated. Or lost in how beautiful the game is. This is a really nice day. This is awesome. It seems like lately I've just been playing in stormy weather all the time. That galleon appears to be anchored at that island, probably completing a voyage. Can't read their sails from here. Storms behind us. That's good. It's very good. Nope, I don't like that song. There we go. No. There we go. That's a cool rock formation there to lose people in when you're playing single player. It's very prominent, you can see it from far away. And uh, a sloop can easily enter there and do any any number of maneuvers, figure eight, U-turn. Galleon will have a difficult time following. It's it very shallow in the center. This is a good island for gunpowder. Pretty sure it's uh, Lone Cove. I'd have to check. It's good to start to get to know the islands, though. Part of playing single player is just going around and exploring. Don't underestimate forts, either. If a fort has a skull above it... Oh, Crook's Hollow. Not Lone Cove. And Crook's Hollow will fire at you. Yep. So I was going to say, not all the forts will fire at you. Yeah, they're going to drive it in. That's okay. We just don't have a care in the world. Shipwreck over there, it looks like. But forts, unless they have a skull above them, they're not going to fire at you. So you can totally anchor up your sloop at a fort and use it to defend your location. If you ever want to hold down an area, you can also beat your sloop and anchor it in such a way that it won't take on water even when it has damage. And this way you'll be able to respawn there over and over again to defend yourself if necessary. These are just the things I've figured out that a uh, single player could do. Now, if you have two people on a sloop, that's much better. You'd be able to do all the same things much more efficiently. It looks like we need to catch the wind actually going southeast now. Hey, I said it right. Look at that. We're not going to turn in front of this island, though. I don't even pretend to know these little ones. They all look the same to me. Paradise Spring. I've not come to this one that much. I believe it has a lagoon in the center. Now, when you do pass islands, and you check the map, and, you know, you start to learn them, it's always good to scan the beach. If you're going to go for a long voyage, I suggest having a couple of gunpowder barrels on board the deck of your ship. So you can deter would-be attackers. There we go. Sloop off the port bow. Or looking for messages in a bottle or treasure that's washed up on the beach, depending on what you're looking for. Now, messages in a bottle can be anything. They can be maps to buried treasure. They can be uh, last-minute orders to merchants that are difficult to fill. So just to understand, it's going to be kind of a random voyage, but usually of high value. Okay, so this sloop actually has its sails up and its lights on. That's okay. We've got our lights on, too. I've noticed people with their lights on generally tend to be less aggressive. It's just kind of a, a consequence of playing the game and paying attention. I've noticed that. So when I don't feel like being aggressive, I leave my lights on. 
Now, if somebody looks like they're moving towards me, one of the things I like to do is turn my lights off and then turn them back on. I like them to know that I saw them and that I see them coming. If this person gets close enough, I might even shout ahoy. But they don't seem like they're interested in me. They're likely doing their own voyage there. And they're on their way. Maybe we we're just cutting between them and, and Plunder Outpost. And they're looking to cash in. But we're not trying to interfere with that. Even though it's going to put us a little more into the wind, we're going to cut away from them to show no ill intention. Flotsam on the ocean. Lots of cannonballs, bananas, and planks can be obtained there if you're short of them. Or you're looking to stock up because you want to fight. The sloop has cut back towards us. So at this point, I'm going to turn off my lights. Just kind of as a, hey, I've changed my state. That's how ready for you I am. I saw you, and I'm letting you know by turning on my lights. Mm, it doesn't look like they're continuing to head towards me. In fact, they are heading away. But they might be looking to go to Thieves' Haven. Which is my favorite spot. Nope, they're turning away from it. Which, if that's the case, that's fine. We would just greet them and assume them to be friendly because their lights are on. Now, maybe turning my lights off scared them and told them that I was going to be aggressive. Or maybe they just saw, thought, nope, that person absolutely sees us. They're, they're, they're more than ready for us because they had time to turn. They had time to toggle their light state. Nope, let's cut away. Let's make sure they know there's no issues. I just want some wind. This doesn't seem like the right location. In fact, it's not. I need to head west. I've been tacked so hard into the wind. I need that large island over there. So we're, in fact, we're going to turn far away from them. And we're going to change the sail's position. We're going to rig to the starboard side. Actually, it's going to be a little more towards the bow than that. Alright, let's go ahead and drop it here. And we'll start, our, start to steady the wheel. Nope, nope. Let's cut it two notches left. I don't want them to think I'm closing on them. It can be tough when you're chasing the wind. No, I thought Thieves Haven was one more island away, but that, when you see no more islands, that is the edge of the map. So surely this person is concerned now. I kind of did that to myself. Hopefully they don't feel like striking first. My plan is really just going to be to pull an anchor up to the island. Realistically, if they sink my ship and I'm a castaway for a while on my favorite island, I'm okay with that. It'll enable me to stockpile supplies, and when I get a ship, I can come back and gather them up later. Plus, some islands are just really, really neat to explore. And I find playing single player, that's really just what I have the most fun with. I don't have anything of value on board. I haven't gathered any supplies. I'm just having fun sailing the ship to my favorite place. If this guy sinks me... Oh well, it's really not a big deal. I'll spawn at some nearby island, and I'll sail in from a different angle. Maybe next time they won't open fire, you know? Let's slow down. Let's, pull, let's start pulling a sail up so they know what's going on here. Because they might just be trying to lose us in here, which is smart. That's what I would do if I was afraid. They're going to fire on us. Okay, let's greet them. We're just saying hi. We left our lights on. We're not in a position to fire on them, and we pulled up our sail, so they know we're not going to ram them.
They're looking to see how many people are on board the ship. I should be doing the same, but I don't want them to see the twinkle of my spyglass, which it's odd that I don't see theirs, so maybe they're not. That could be seen as aggressive. So tell you what, um... If I turn, if I turn, it's going to look like I'm putting my cannons onto them. So here's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to put my cannons all the way up. Right? Because at this point, they know... I can't really fire on them, okay? And they pulled their sail up. So I'm really just going to turn a little bit and give a little bit of sail. I'm just going to coast in nice and easy. Maybe we made a friend. Maybe this is their favorite place, too. Maybe I'll have somebody to drink some grog with. There's some really neat places on this island. Although, generally, I like to pull to the interior of it with my ship. But if that's not what's on today's adventure, then that's okay. We still haven't got a response. Ahoy! Perhaps they went aboard the island. Ashore, aboard, ashore. Oh, it's got a gunpowder barrel. Okay, fair enough. That's cool. I just like this island. Let's press on. There's no reason to ruin this person's day. They seem to be working alone. And that's quite alright. So we'll just we'll just coast away. They probably don't know how to use the canned message response. That's fine. Look at this island, though. This island is really neat. When you need to move around an island, know that you can have your sail in different configurations. This is half sail. This is more like a quarter sail. And now we're being fired upon. Really? Okay, that person was scared. Those weren't those were warning shots. That's fine. That's fine. Perhaps they didn't see how close I had gotten and they were startled. But I'm obviously not hindering their direction of travel because there's nothing else here. This is the edge of the map. All right, here's our channel. Woo! That one got close. That one's from the island. That's okay. The sloop's a sturdy vessel. It'll handle it. So really, at this point, I'm sure this person is really wondering what we're doing. There's no reason not to have this stuff on us, because... Well, why wouldn't we? We're not trying to stockpile supplies. Take my fancy new bucket. Oop, I hit something. See? And this is what happens when you're not addressing which way you're pointing. There you go. Ease up. But luckily, we're going really slow. Well, we've got a headwind. And now it looks like the island is firing at our friend, who's likely following us due to how curious they are about what we're doing. <laughs> I'm sure of it. 
At this point, I think I am going to take cannonballs. Not because I want to fight, but because I'd rather be prepared. Speaking of, we're going to switch to the blunderbuss. Just in case, I'm not going to be attacking anyone from long range, but I do need to be able to defend myself. Okay, we're in the lagoon. Let's drop the anchor. This is Thieves Haven. A pretty amazing place with lots of really cool stuff. Okay, let's hoist the sail. Excellent. So anytime I get a chance to come here, I like to come here. Now, if you're doing voyages, this place has lots of chickens and pigs and gunpowder barrels. Not to mention the occasional chests, messages in a bottle. This place is rife with goodies. Check it out. It's the new front of the ship. We've made a lot of money from doing voyages. So as you can see, some of this place is built on an old shipwreck. And there's all kinds of ammo in different areas. Let's see if our friend followed. Nope. They, uh, they had no interest to see what we were up to. They're likely chasing a voyage, trying to make some money. I don't blame them. I don't. But a big part of what makes this game fun for me is just how beautiful it is. Getting to run around these, these islands. How crazy colorful the night sky is. The water. This place is especially cool. Uh-oh. But it does also have some enemies. Oh, it looks like they might have found where the, where the canned message response button was. And now they're calling ahoy. Let's see if they've followed me into the... What was that sound? Oh, there he is. Okay. No, let's play. Come on, hang out with me. I've got Grog. Come on. <laughs> they, they, they don't want to. Okay, well they got my attention. I mean. Ah, fair enough. They're shy. That's okay. I've had some pretty intense encounters before, and I have to say, I've I've had the uh, the lust for the loot so bad, I've I've sank a few ships myself with no good reason to. But I've been on the receiving end of it as well. It is uh, part of what makes the seas perilous. And the game really wouldn't be the same without it. Sailing really does feel like an accomplishment. And as long as you're not worried about carrying anything valuable while you learn the ropes of sailing, you don't have to worry about getting sunk. There's not much of a penalty, unless you're carrying a lot of good stuff. Let's see, we want to go up there. Should be a cave, yeah. Oh no, this is where the water cuts through. I do really enjoy this island. Oh, look! We found where our friend is parked. They don't want to pull in because maybe they don't they don't think there's enough room. I don't know. I don't know. Let's play him some music. We're just trying to hang out. Things will be okay. 
The seas aren't such a scary place. <laughs> this person is like, what is this person's play? I'm just... I'm just saying hi. I really am. Oh, now the island's gonna fire on you. Look! See what you did? Oh! That's not my fault! <laughs> yeah! This person is like, oh! Oh, they're taking long shots at me! With the, with the long shot rifle, really? Oh. They could have just rammed me. They could have fired upon me. They're not particularly aggressive themselves. They just don't know what I'm up to. <laughs> okay, at, at this point I need my mermaid. I'm too far away to swim back. I just wanted to be friends. <laughs> Maybe they'll come back. Maybe they heard that. I don't know how far away they are. I'm just swimming to say hi. I mean, look how far out in the water I am. My mermaid appeared. Come on! Be friends! Drink with me! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> as, as you can see, the, uh, Sea of Thieves really doesn't have to be more intimidating than you want it to be. Because here we ran into this, and this person could have attacked us, but, and we would have done our best, but, okay. Alright. Ooh! I knew that was coming. Oh, I should have known that was coming. That's okay. Our mermaid's right here. Ooh! That was an, ooh! Uh, jump scare at the end. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Anywho, so they're they're antisocial. That's fine. Let's get to where we were going, or maybe they're just once bitten, twice shy. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Oh, I see something. Like I said, this island tend to has it tends to have it all. Oh, what have we got? Message in a bottle, huh? Um. So the Merchant Alliance would like me to ship one barrel of gunpowder to the Ancient Spire outpost by 9 a.m. on the 8th. Oh, how far away is that? That's five days. One barrel of gunpowder? This island generally has lots of barrels of gunpowder on it, so I don't think that'll be a problem. What I think I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to attack the skeletons that are holding up the cannons on the edges of the island, so our friend doesn't have to worry about being shot to come in here. Mm, but for that, we need to go higher up than this. This isn't high enough. No gunpowder barrels up here, though. Usually there are a lot of gunpowder barrels up here. There's our friend. They're still not sure what they want to do. See, if they were on a voyage with a deadline, they would be going after it. So perhaps they're on a, uh, a, a treasure chest voyage or a hunt the skeleton boss voyage. Order of souls. Or maybe they're just messing around like I am. That's why I thought they'd want to be friends. I figured maybe this was just their favorite island, too. Hmm. Okay, so we'll go back up top, take care of the skeletons on the cannons, and then we'll find our cool little cave spot here on the island. Look at this. See? 
It's a nice little waterfall with a bridge over it. Skeletons, though, that's one of the things that is not good, So, but you can take care of that. Skeletons don't come back right away. So you can make the island more safe. Okay, so there's that one. Now we have one on the other side. See, look at this place. Look at all this cool stuff here. And there are lots of neat places. I think part of what I'm going to do when I do single player episodes like this, I'm going to try to mix it up, but I'm going to try to show you some of the cooler places in the game. Because you don't always have the time to stop and appreciate them when you're playing with a group, when you're trying to get uh, voyages done. But they really are neat. I don't see our friend the sloop. Possible they left. They had more important things to do. And that's fine. It's perfectly alright. One of the wonderful things about Sea of Thieves is it really doesn't force you to do anything. If I didn't feel like doing this gunpowder barrel delivery to Ancient Spire, I wouldn't. And it would be fine. But I know Ancient Spire is close by, and my odds of finding a gunpowder barrel are pretty good. So I might as well look. Oh, yeah, let's go all the way up top here. This is pretty cool. Look at this. That's uncharted water. Those are rocks. That's like an atoll and, and rocks. So our friend is long gone. Uh, but there's a galleon over at Ancient Spire Outpost. That's where we'll have to bring our gunpowder barrel. That island is Devil's Ridge. That island's also pretty interesting. Snakes on that island. Look at the storm. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay. So we verified our friend is gone. Our, our would-be friend. They they have they have indeed left. So with that, we can stop worrying and being on the lookout for them. And we'll just keep our eyes peeled for a gunpowder barrel as we set up to end the episode. Usually there are more gun... Oh, there's one right there. And that's kind of where we need to be is on that bridge for that cave system. And I don't remember how to get to it because its entrance is somewhat hidden. Oh, look! It's a little spring. All sorts of cool stuff here. Alright, let's drop down. Ooh, ooh. Alright, so it looks like we got here from this ladder, is how we would get here. Okay. Ah, is this it? Maybe? Nope. Not quite. But I know where the gunpowder barrel is. Oh, it's over here, right? Yeah, this is just a little, little alcove here. It's just a pretty cool little place to hang out. Yeah, see, look, you have the overview here, which is really cool. And then you have this walkway, which goes over here to the edge. This is where the gunpowder barrel is. Perfect. Wonderful. Because when you get a message in a bottle, they usually pay pretty good. So even though it's not a big deal, if we can do it, why not, right? We still have five days. This is this is the game though is explore exploration. Ooh. 
Okay, so let's go take our gunpowder back. Let's go to Ancient Spire Outpost. We're going to need to head northeast. Just going to take us somewhat close to the storm. That's okay. The wind seems to be pushing it away from us. So that's our heading. Sort of east to northeast, but just slightly. Time to let the sail down. And we'll continue to turn. So we need to go past the fort. You can see how much easier it was to see all the way to Ancient Spire from atop the rock. So really, this is kind of a, a neat configuration to be in single player, although not necessarily by design, but just kind of what we found. So we, we only have one gunpowder barrel on board. So while I do want to be ready to defend myself, should the need arise... We're going to go ahead and lower our cannons and load them. If they sink us, all they get is a, a mine in the water that they have to avoid or else it blows up on them. This is a good heading, so we'll go right past the Crow's Nest Fortress to Ancient Spire. We'll turn in our one barrel of gunpowder many days early. Four days early, I believe. Yes. Okay. There it is. You can see it lit up from here. Looks like uh, maybe the galleon is still there. That could be a tree. Maybe, or a building. It's hard to see from down here. See if this helps. It looks pretty tall. I'm thinking that's a galleon with lights on. So we'll park at the far dock. Although our gunpowder does go to the merchant. Crow's Nest Fortress. Fortresses can be a lot of fun to occupy, too. And there'll be no skeletons on them. They also often have a lot of gunpowder and cannonballs. I think it's this, at this point it's safe to say that it is not a galleon. And we're going to be able to just pull right up to the dock. We've got all our lights on. Our cannons are down, but... Yep, there's our galleon. They sailed away. They've got more important things to do, too. You will run into people that are aggressive, and un even when unprovoked. There's Blotsam, port side. But it's not as common as you would think. The wind's a little strong today, but that's working in our favor. The sea's a little high. We made it here without incident. The wind was absolutely in our favor for the storm. Storm single player can be challenging, but not game breaking. In fact, if I think I'm being outperformed by a two man sloop or galleon and I don't know where else to go, the storm is where I would go just to challenge them as much as myself. Plus, if you go down in the storm, it's a lot less likely anyone will be able to capitalize on your gains. Although in my case, I just have a gunpowder barrel. And we'll pull the sail mostly up. We're 
just going to turn right on over to the dock and talk to the merchant. Sell our gunpowder barrel and make our money. Probably won't be too much. Gunpowder barrels generally aren't worth all that much. But the fact that it's a message in a bottle, I don't know. Who knows? Okay, at this point, I want to sail the rest of the way up. And we're going to turn into it slightly. Just like that. And lower the anchor. Almost perfect. I bet I could run off the cannon. Hold on. Nope, the cannon's too slippery. How about the deck? Oof, I did it. Nice. All right, what do we got, Senior Trader Mildred? 500 for a barrel of gunpowder. That's actually pretty good. Must have been because it was on a deadline. Merchant goods always pay more when you have a contract for them. Thanks. Okay, that being said, now we're going to cut back to the more beautiful place for the outro. Look at this place. It's such a cool little island. There are a lot of them. That's where we're going to wrap things up, though. I hope you've enjoyed our single-player voyage, just to kind of have fun and show the game off. And how uh, how good-looking it is. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you've had a, a good time watching. Because, as always, I've had a good time playing. So come back next time, where I'll showcase more multiplayer and single-player voyages. But until then, take care.